Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our class on building your trading foundations. And tonight we're going to be discussing trends and trend lines. Now, for those of you that are joining us for the first time or through an internet promotion, ETX is a regulated provider, so therefore I'm required to give you a risk warning. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds that you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETS Capital and the presenter are not financial or investment advisors and do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Any securities or instruments that are mentioned are for educational purposes only. Now, for those of you that don't know much about ETX, we are a fast-growing financial services company based in London, and we are authorized by and regulated by the FCA, and we are also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. So tonight, we're going to be discussing trend lines and trends. Now, there's an old adage in the marketplace, the trend is your friend. And statistically, if you always trade with the trend, you will make more profit than when you try to trade against it. And statistically, you will make more pips and you will make more successful trades. Now, there's lots of traders out there who want to be you know, disruptive or counterintuitive and want to trade against the trend. And there's all kinds of trading strategies out there. But the fact is, you can't go against the numbers and the statistics. Now, one of the main reasons we want to learn how to read a Forex chart is that we can then start applying or putting on these charts information that helps us make important decisions. Now, Forex charts or any kind of financial chart can look drastically different and look very confounding in the very beginning. Okay, But there are three basic types of charts, line charts, bar charts, and candlestick charts. Now, tonight, we're not here really to discuss the different kinds of charts. And that's our first class in our building your foundations. And that's understanding how to use these charts. But to briefly go over, a bar chart, and which is my favorite chart type of chart, gives you a lot of information in a visual display. Each one of these bars represents the open, the high, the low, and the close for the period it covers. Now, we see this in a visual representation. So we also see the volatility in the markets. We can start to see some lines or some prices that an asset is, has in common. Look here. Look at all of these opens, closes, and tops that are exactly the same number. That tells you something. Here, we can see a well-formed downtrend. We can draw a line underneath price movement. And this is one of the reasons we want to use a chart, because then we can start deciphering what happens in the market. And each one of these bars represents the open, the high, the low, and the close. Now, a lot of you guys are saying out there, I don't use bar charts. I use candlestick charts. Well, the fact is, each candle does the same thing. It represents the open, the high, the low, and the close. Now, a brief side note, too many people think that candlesticks are all about the reds and the greens when they're not. But still, you would, use, you would denote or look for or locate a trend exactly the same way with candlesticks as you would with bar charts. And you would draw trend lines exactly the same. Now, there are many ways to identify the direction of a trend. And the word trend is very simple. We have trends in fashion. We have trends in automotive. We have trends in home decorating. And a trend of a, in a financial market is basically the same. It's the overall movement or the direction things are going. Like if we were to look at cars. You know, a couple of years ago that we were building cars as big as you can. SUVs are, are huge. Then we started, you know, they went out of fashion. We started making smaller SUVs and smaller cars. And then we got to smaller cars. Okay. So we could see a trend 
in the overall market. But when SUVs were becoming very popular, we saw a trend in the market as people left sedans and two-door cars to go to these SUVs. You know, station wagons went out of fad. They disappeared. So this was a trend, no different than the financial markets. So trading with the trend is trading with the flow of the markets. When a prevailing trend is up, why would you look to short entries when buying might result in much smoother trades? Now, many amateur traders, even when facing a long lasting trend that has been going on for months, can't stop trying to predict reversals. Whereas they could have made so much more money, they simply joined the trend. But even if you are not a trend following trader, you can combine the concept of trading with the higher time frame trends with your regular trading approach. You can start on a daily time frame and see if the trend is up, down or sideways. And then you can use that information on your lower execution time frames. But first we have to understand and understand what a trend is and what a well-developed trend looks like. Now, most traders only use bars and candlesticks when it comes to observing charts and completely forget about the effectiveness of a simple tool that allows them to look through all the clutter and the noise, and that's called a line graph. Okay. Now, I personally do not recommend line charts for anybody. Okay. They, I, I feel that they have too little bit of information, but you can get around that using a simple moving average. Because what a moving average does, it takes the noise out of price movement. Because when you're looking for identifying a trend, not a trend line, but the overall direction of the marketplace, <coughs> we don't need to look at volatility. We're not looking at highs and lows. We're looking for an overall trend. We're trying to spot when SUV sales started to climb and station wagons and van sales started to go down. So the purpose of a bar or candlestick is to provide detailed information about what is happening here in charts. So moving averages are undoubtedly among the most popular trading tools and they are great to identify the market direction as well. Okay. So what a moving average is, it simply takes the noise. It takes the highs and the lows and combines the price to give you an overall average. And for that, we can then get a general view of how the market is moving. So let's go look at a live chart and see how we would do this in real life. So let me pop up some charts on your screen. Uh, there we go. Now, the first thing is to understand the trend. Now, you can have sideways trends, uptrends, and downtrends. You can have, not trend lines. We're not on trend lines yet. We're just on trends, market overall movement. Now, most people, or most beginning traders especially, would like a trend to go like that. But the fact is, markets don't move like that. And if you ever saw just a price soar straight up, you know there's something wrong and you don't want to trade in that market. Something freaky happened because a good trend moves in what we call peaks and valleys, pushes and thrusts. Push, ease, push, ease, push. Because there's always a price in which buyers will enter the market. Then as price moves up, there's a price, a point where the buyers say the price is getting too high and they back off the market or they say, ah, I'm going to sell my asset and book my profit. Okay. Either one of these gives that market the breather. Okay. When the market breathes and the price comes down a little bit, the buyers re-enter the market because the buyer said, ah, that price was too high to buy into the market at that price, sees the price ease down. And he says, okay, now I'm ready to get in the market. And he starts buying, and that will then, again, push the price up. And this happens repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly. Okay. And a well-developed trend 
shows this very, very nicely. And because there are rules to that, okay, and how to identify when a trend is reversing or when a trend is retracing, okay, we can then not sweat it out when we're in an uptrend and the price starts to fall. Now, we have to know at what point it's really a true reversal. But if we understand and fully believe in our hearts that price doesn't move in this straight line, that price moves in this line, making higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, that we don't sweat that little movement in between. Because the thing is, you don't want to be sitting here and you bought Bitcoin down here. Bitcoin pushed up to here, and then it eased down. You sold out. Right. And then Bitcoin came down here and then soared all the way up here. I mean, just you know, a couple months ago when Bitcoin soared to $20,000, I know lots of people that had gotten in at 11 and when it pushed to 13 and then eased back down to 12, they sold at $1,000 profit. Look, face it, $1,000 profit was very nice money. Don't misunderstand me. But they sit back kicking themselves in the head when they didn't ride it out till at least 19,000. And they're sitting back and saying, look at that, I lost $8,000 by selling too early. So you're saying to me, okay, well that's a dumb excuse because I could have bought back into the market as the price recovered. Well, if you stop to think that, and I'm just using Bitcoin as a hypothetical because it moved so much. Okay. So if you had bought Bitcoin here, as it started to rise and you stayed the market to this point and it started to ease down. So you sold at this point. You're saying when it turned back around, why didn't I get back in the market? I could have gotten back in the market. So I could have sold here and taken my profit, re-entered here and bought back in and still wrote it out. Well, that's not going to happen because what's going to happen is you sold here. Okay. When you sold there, you had to cover the pips. Okay, your cost of deal buying and selling. Okay. And that ate into a little bit of your profit. Then when you re-entered the market here, okay, you lost all the profit between here and here. You would re-enter the market here and you still had to cover the spread. And by the time you actually got it, because it was really moving quickly, you got it in here. You rode it up to here. But at this point, you sold back again when it eased. So you made the profit between here and here. You made the profit between here and here. Okay, but you didn't make the profit from here. And a lot of times you miss the cues. So understanding how a trend works is very important. Not, not just understanding it, convincing yourself that the these eases in price movement are very, very important. Because if we look at some well-developed trends, We'll see, and if you convince yourself that this always happens, and how you here, if you had entered the pound here and wrote it down to here, okay, then it reversed back up. And say you got out here, it went back up, but then it bounced right off that trend line. It came back down, back up, came back down. You would have been better off riding that pound all the way to here. But now, because we have such a well developed downtrend, we have the push, the ease, the push, the ease. Now we see it pulling above the higher highs, and we would have then waited for it to bounce off and return to that ease, return to that downtrend, and we could have entered as a sell, put our stop loss here at the high, and taken our profit down here. That would have been nice profit trading off of that trend. So this happens all the time in the markets. This is how a market operates properly. Okay, look at this. I just clicked on to the USD JPY. I haven't even changed my yellow marks. And look at that. It almost mirrors the movement of the USD JPY. And these are current charts. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. Let's talk a little bit more about how you would verify the trend. Give me a second to get my PowerPoint back up here. All 
Okay. So once you've identified the series of higher highs and higher lows, we start to have to make sense of it. And that's important. And you make sense of it using trend lines. You see, trends don't have firm rules. Trends are an overall direction and movement of a marketplace. Trend lines are where you start to take rules and put them into the markets. So I mainly use trend lines to identify changes of established trends. When you have a strong trend and suddenly the trend line breaks, it can give you a signal transition is about to happen. Trend lines during ranges are ideal when it comes to finding breakout scenarios. Also, trend lines can be combined for moving averages nicely because they have complementary characteristics. Now, trend lines are a useful tool for visually highlighting a trend and potentially being part of a trading strategy. Now, there are lots of mis and inaccurate information in trend lines. Learning how to use a trend line effectively if you're going to use them is crucial so you don't fall into several of the common traps. Trend lines are a technical analysis tool used to define and project price trends in major markets, such as stock, forex, and futures, and cryptos. Trend lines have the potential to alert us when a pullback, a move against the trend direction is over and the trend is resuming, or when a trend is accelerating or reversing. Price is the ultimate indicator though. Therefore, price action must always be considered when using trend lines. Now, I will try to explain the reasoning behind trend lines. And then we're going to talk about how you would actually put them on a chart. Because I know everybody out there wants to find a strategy or a system to outsmart the markets and outsmart all the other traders. Because you're making profit on their losses. You don't want to them to know how you're analyzing the markets. But imagine if you could put a line on a chart, and when that line is drawn correctly by the rules, you've drawn the same line that a million other traders have drawn. Now, you're not making the same decisions that traders, other traders can make. You know that this trend line is accurate, and this is the same trend line they're all looking at. So when the price comes near that properly drawn trend line, you don't know how they're going to react, but you know that that price is crucially important to the markets. And when it touches that trend line, you're expecting some type of action or reaction. That's it. You haven't decided whether it's going to go up or down, but you know the euro 124.12 because that's where it would touch your trend line is dipping down, should have a reaction. When you know at what price the markets should react, even though you don't know what that reaction will be, you can use that as very good information. Then you can apply a trading strategy when the markets do react. You're prepared to take the proper move. Or if you were in the market, you owned an asset, you owned the euro. The euro is moving up nicely. Now it's easing back down and it's easing down to that trend line at 124.12. You're expecting it to bounce off that trend line at 124.12 and continue its uptrend. Okay. It doesn't. It breaks that trend line. That's telling you that it may be it's time to exit the market because the buyers aren't pushing that and supporting that trend price. And therefore it's got a bigger chance of reversing instead of just retracing. So what happens, it alerts you to a potential problem and maybe alerts you to move your stop loss or take your profit and get out of the markets. Now, trend lines are drawn on charts to help predict the general direction of price. They also help you to see reversals. Trend lines also help to determine good entry and exit points and help you decide where to put your stops. They are quite good, but like any form of analysis, if used alone, they won't make you many pips. However, they may make a great addition to your trading arsenal. The main problem with trend lines is placing them on your chart. It can be a little intimidating to start, but with a little bit of practice, you'll find it's very easy to get to trend lines. You just have to know the rules and get them right. 
So the purpose of a drawing of the trend line is to identify where possible reversals will take place. They can also signal that a change in the trend may occur. In an uptrend, we draw the line along the lowest points in the trend without letting the line cross through prices. You need at least two touches of a trend line for it to be an acceptable trend line, but it needs a third touch to become valid. So in other words, and everything gets reversed for a downtrend. In an uptrend, we would draw our price underneath the prices. It's supporting the price movement up above. In a downtrend, we would do the exact opposite. Now, the hardest thing is identifying where to start your trend line, because where to start it's not is difficult because you cannot let, you cannot draw a trend line when any of these prices break through it. So therefore, extending your line forward isn't so difficult because you have to find a path that it doesn't touch these lines. So in this case, what you look for is what's called the significant swing low. It's when price reversed itself and started moving up. Now, unfortunately, especially in the Forex market, we have lots of odd and end swing lows. You know, you can see the price for some reason an hour ago dipped all the way down this low, but it went right back up to, to where it is open. Okay, that's not a critical swing low. It's just a freak of nature, so to speak. So we have to find the critical swing low. And it's usually the point where the market's the lowest point that the asset touched before it started moving in the opposite direction. Then we want to extend that line forward. Now, if we were only in price trading at this point, we would then extend this line forward. And we want to look for points in common. We want to be able to lay this line on an unobstructed line but it needs to touch at least two points because we could draw a line here but it has no validity to us doesn't touch any points so we would then draw it we could then draw it to here and if price ever broke through that line that trend line ceases to exist and you have to locate a new price so a price hypothetically dropped down here at this point went back up there we can no longer have that trend line because we'd have to then redraw that trend line, including the lowest price that asset touched. But until it has a third touch, we can't use it in making any trading decisions. So here we have one, two, three. At this point, we have a valid trend line. That means it has held that price and it is actually supporting that price. And if we look, push, ease, push, ease push ease okay. and we would expect each of those eases to stay above that trend line okay and in a very well developed trend you would expect that price to come down and touch that trend that means each time it pushed up it made a higher high then as it eased down it made a lower high then it pushed up to a higher high pushed down to a lower high pushed up to a higher high, down to a lower high. Because if you notice, each one of these eases is higher than the pre previous ease. Now, a trend line helps us define that. And we can have many trend lines because pr as price continues to move, one trend line becomes invalid. Once it's invalidated, you can never reinvigorate it. It's dead. Now, there are two main types of trends bullish trends and bearish trends there's a third one that we don't talk about much as far as a trend but not a trend line there's two trend lines bullish and bearish because you can't draw a sideways trend line you do have sideways price movement and you can have a sideways trend in price congestion a bullish trend line has a positive slope and is formed by connecting two or more low points the second swing low must be higher than the first swing low. So in other words, swing low swing low and now we've established a bullish trend line. And we've extended it out in the future, but this is not a valid trend line because it hasn't made the third touch.
Now, if you're watching closely, this chart, that price chart, is the same as this price chart. Okay. So here we're up at this point. It hasn't come down. It hasn't come down. So it's right here at this point. And we still have all this movement. It's not a valid trend line until here. And a bearish trend line is just the opposite. We draw it at the tops of the prices or at the swing highs, but all the rules are exactly the same. Now, the trend is your friend. It's the oldest saying in the marketplace. But like all friendships, it's kind of complicated. Unless you understand the nature of the trend, your friendship is destined to fail. As any trader quickly realizes, there is a great deal more to trading successfully than merely identify a securities trend and buying pullbacks in an uptrend and shorting bounces in a downtrend. So let's start with the basics. Okay, an uptrend, and this is what I keep trying to reinforce. Not a trend line, but an uptrend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. Now, a lot of times you'll start reading a strategy, you'll start reading a book, you'll start reading something, and you'll see LL, LH, HH, and HL. Higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, and lower highs. So an uptrend is consists of higher highs and higher lows. So each time the asset pushes itself up, it forms a new high. As it eases down, it forms a higher low than the previous low. Then it pushes back up again, makes a higher high, which is higher than the previous high, and then it'll ease back down and form a higher low, higher than this section. Now, there are all kinds of strategies, calculations, and gurus pushing things. Some people have this rule and it's it's a well written set of information on trends okay. you might want to go by where they they identify these as as ones twos and threes and they say you can actually measure the expectation of the push based on the volume uh, the expect the push of the first trend and it's all types of calculations i don't know how much i actually believe in that then there's all ones that where the middle push is always supposed to be stronger than the previous push. And if it isn't, then it's going to signal that the trend is over. Again, these are all types of people's explanations. Traders, some well-known traders, some, some experienced traders defining a trend. I keep it pretty loose. Lower lows, lower highs, higher lows, higher low, and higher highs. I don't have rules and calculations because I believe the rest of it's all price action. And I have to be very carefully looking at how price is moving and not doing calculations. But we're going to look at some charts in a meantime, in a few seconds to see how some project price based on the, the size of the trend and the retracement. Now, there are two major obstacles that you will run into when attempting to apply this traditional wisdom. First, not all trends are regular. In other words, well, one type of trend type, while well, one type of support level may hold well in an uptrend, say such as using a 20 period moving average, in another trend, it might hold to a 10 period moving average, then a 20 period moving average, then somewhere in between. Because trends change, the overall, Understanding of how markets move. Oh, my charts aren't. Hold on a second. My page didn't change with you guys. Give me one second. See if I can get it to. There we go. Okay. So we have to understand that there aren't hard. The only hardcore rule there is, is how to draw the trend line. The rest of it is done by observation and experience. You also have to keep in mind that no trend lasts forever. At some point, an uptrend will become exhausted and will break through support instead of pulling back into its bouncing and will then continue higher once again. Without a solid understanding of how trends exhaust themselves 
and the tools for recognizing different types of exhaustion and how they affect the correction of a trend, you will easily find yourself on the wrong side of a market move. Now, to me, price action is the first key. And after price action, I am then looking at volume. Volume will help define a trend because as you see the trend making higher highs and then falling into lower highs and then higher highs, you should see volume replicating this. You should see the traders following along and continuing to push this trend. But most traders who pick up a book on technical analysis will run into the concept of trend formation or trend development, whereby the trend consists of a series of three waves of upside that are often punctuated by two smaller corrective waves. As you see on this trade, there are all types of explanations on trend development. But trend lines, though, are one of the most used and misused tools in a toolbox. You need to use these. They should be used on every chart. That's why we call this the basic foundations. There are some basics you need to include no matter how you're going to trade, no matter what strategy you're going to use, no matter how you're going to interpret the markets. You have to, number one, learn to read a chart because without charts, you could have some firsthand information that Samsung Galaxy 9 sales are way exceeding market expectation. And therefore, Samsung price should skyrocket when that information is released to the public. You could be 100% right. You got this information from a friend of yours who's you know, a high manager at Samsung. Now, fine. So you decide you want to buy Samsung. At what price are you going to enter the market and buy it? Just any price it is right now? What happens if it blipped up and you're buying it too high? Now, once you bought it, say you got a good deal. You got it at well. It starts moving up. How do you know when to exit the market? There's nothing your buddy's going to tell you that's going to help you know what price to enter the market. As it moves up and moves up and moves up, maybe if you had a trend line and it was moving up along that trend line and you had the next set of building blocks of support and resistance on your chart, each one of those are just warning signals to you. Keep an eye on it here. This is maybe where you'd want to exit the market. And nothing your buddy tells you will help you figure out where to put your stop loss to protect it from reversing. This is only done on charts. So the main reason I will use a trend line is to delineate the conditions that define the current trend of that market. If the trend line correctly defines those conditions, then penetrations of the trend lines are significant. Okay, first, the trend line defines the limits of the swings that compose the trend. So it's important to be sure there are actual swings before you draw the line. For instance, if you see many consecutive bars where there, you can draw a line across the lows of the bars, this tends to be common in parabolic moves. A trend line drawn across those lows will probably not be meaningful. But as you can see in this chart, you're constantly redefining your trend lines. Because at this point, we would have drawn, in the early point, we would have drawn a trend line there. Once price broke that, we'd have to redefine our trend line, and we would be using this trend line. Once price broke below that, we'd have to redefine that trend line, and this would be the new trend line. Okay. If you notice, we're always using that swing low. Okay. When price broke below that, we're defining that. Okay. Now, the current trend line that we're using might be here, but look how valid, how helpful This one is in the current marketplace. We saw price push up, ease down, push up, ease down, push up. Not a very well-defined trend, but it's doing the right thing. But look, it's price in the current marketplace, ease back down. We drew that trend line there. We extended out in the future. Look at how many times price moved up, came back down, bounced off of there, came back down. The minute it broke here, that's telling you it's time to sell. Get out of that market. Okay. And so we are constantly redefining these trend lines. Okay. So how to draw trend lines? It's not complicated. Identify two swing lows or two swing high points. Draw a line, join in. There you have it. Now your chart has a trend line. But wait one minute. Even though you can place a trend line, 
based on two swing highs and two swing lows. The trend line remains unconfirmed until it's hit a third time. Okay. So remember the charts we started out with before? Same charts. So here we go. Swing low, swing low. Moving forward, third swing low. What to do when it validated that trend line, price soared off there and continued back up on that uptrend. Okay. When, if you weren't in the market, we're looking at a point to enter that market and price validated a trend line and bounced off of it, that was an excellent point to enter the markets. Now, look what happens. We continued that price movement. It moved up, but then price bounced back down and broke that trend line. That's telling you that uptrend is long over. When it broke that trend line, you might want to have considered a sell position. Now, trend lines can be placed on one, any time frame, uh, but they're more effective on longer time frames. The best thing you can do is look at longer term trends and draw that trend line because you can have many different trend lines and many different trends. So you can realize the euro is in the middle of a long term uptrend. Okay. It's coming off of a long term downtrend and it's been recovering since 2008 and steadily moving up. Now, we had some lows. Now, we also have a very nice medium-term uptrend in the euro. So we have a long-term uptrend, we have a medium-term uptrend, and we also have a short-term uptrend. That's telling you that that movement is very positive for the euro and should continue in that direction. So, unfortunately, too many traders look at price and see here and here. Okay, and they don't want to draw this trend line. This is the proper trend line because you don't have a third point validated. They end up drawing here and they don't want to let a trend line end, even though it broke and it's no longer valid. And so they draw that trend line out here and they keep trading for it. But if you notice, when you drew it the proper way, this guy was expecting some type of action here. Okay. But because the right people who drove it the wrong way, weren't expecting anything at that price. So here, you would have been falsely selling and getting out of the market because it broke the trend line, but it really didn't because it didn't break the proper trend line. So remember, connect swing lows to swing lows. And the more points in common, the better. The longer the trend is run, the better. And remember, you need three points so each time you see price bounce off the same line, the more likely it is that others are watching it too and playing the same game you are. This could help you get several good entries in a row, but remember, trend lines won't last forever. So you want to make sure you set proper stop losses to get yourself out quickly if support and resistance trend lines eventually fail. Remember, buy into bullish trend lines and sell into bearish trend lines. So trading only in the direction of the trend will let you exploit potential trend line bounces as efficiently as possible. And while they won't always give us winning trades, the trades that are winners should give us more pips than had we been attempting to place trades against the trend. So coming, coming full circle, trend lines are a very simple tool to use. You are connecting dots on a chart, but hopefully the three tips above that I gave you will help you make better decisions. Make sure the lines you draw are connecting two or more highs or lows, but have not been broken by price between those points. Remember to look for a third bounce to validate a trend line, and also make sure you're taking advantage of trading with the trend by looking for buys in bullish markets and sells in bearish markets. So whether you use trend lines or indicators, price action is what ultimately determines how much money we make. Learning about price action, how trends move, is never a bad idea. Once we understand the basic concepts of how price moves, then trend lines become a more effective tool. Now, again, there are all types of interpretations out there. But when you're building your trading system, the first thing is learning to read a chart. The second thing is starting to put lines, simple lines in your chart, not building a trading system, not building a strategy. It's simply, no matter how you're going to trade, there are some basic tools. 
trend lines, charts, support and resistance and volume. However, you're going to make your ultimate decision. It should never be made without these pieces of information. It's like a builder not putting his first cornerstone square and that whole building will end up on an angle. You need to start out somewhere. So if you start out with these basics, you can then build in any direction because your foundation would be solid. So on that note, I'm going to say good night to everybody. You can access a recorded copy of this class in about 24 hours by using the same link you used to come to tonight's class. Now, tomorrow night, we'll be picking up from here and adding support and resistance and volume under our charts. So we have charts, trend lines, support and resistance and volume, and that gives us our building blocks to move forward, to applying strategies, technical indicators, analyzing, doing all the other stuff that's you know, a lot less straightforward. These are basic straightforward tools. So I'm going to say goodnight to everybody. Hopefully you'll join us tomorrow night. And by the end of tomorrow night, we should be able to put everything on our chart for you then to understand how that asset you're looking at is moving, where it's going to go from there, how much you can make, what trade you're going to make, where you're going to enter the trade. That's a whole different story. That's strategy. But this is learning to read or learning to walk before you run. Okay. So on that note, I'm going to say good night. Thank you for being part of ETX. And you can practice all this on the ETX charts on our platform. Our advanced charts are excellent, giving you live up-to-the-minute data. And you, if you don't understand all this, we have all kinds of tutorials on the site. Or you can contact customer support, and they'll be more than glad to hook you up with someone who can help you out. Thank you very much, and thank you for supporting ETX. Have a good evening now.